Hello and welcome to the fifth session of our virtual 2020 Make Your Mark conference brought to you via Zoom webinar sponsored by the Iowa Developmental Disability Council. My name is Bill Collisted and I'm the Public Policy Manager of the Iowa Developmental Disability Council. Although seeing you all in person would be wonderful, we've enjoyed connecting with you through our virtual sessions over the last month. Don't forget, our last conference session will be a legislative forum this Friday, October 2nd at noon. Thank you for taking time to be here today. I would like to thank America Group, Talk to Me Technologies, and Relay Iowa and Telecommunications Iowa for exhibiting with us this year. We truly appreciate your involvement and support with the virtual conference and your commitment to providing Iowans with resources they need to be active in their communities and state. If anyone would like more information on Amerigroup, um, Talk to Me Technologies or Relay Iowa, please contact us separately outside the session and we will list your contact information on the screen for you. Please remember all attendees are muted. We will be running a live Q&A at the end of the session. The question and answer feature is located at the bottom of your screen on the toolbar. So if you have any questions, just pop them in there, toggle over the bottom of your screen to make the toolbar appear. You can also ask your questions through the chat feature located in the same actions toolbar at the bottom. Please also note that the closed captioning button located in the toolbar, click that button to turn on the closed captions. And if you miss anything, don't worry, we'll be sending around an on-demand recording to everyone attending today's when it's available. We are very excited for today's presentation. We are joined by Bill and Kyle Stump. Bill Stump lives in Dubuque, Iowa with his son Kyle and is employed as a licensed practical nurse in the intermediate care facility for people with intellectual disabilities in Dubuque. Bill has been an active on, or Bill has been active on numerous local state um, including the Iowa Developmental Disability Council and national organizations over the year. He currently sees, serves on the Board of Disability Rights Iowa and is a member of the Iowa Coalition for Integration Employment. Kyle Stump also lives in Dubuque and graduated from high school in 2009. In 2014, Kyle got a job at Papa John's Pizza in Dubuque and he has been working there for the last five years. Kyle has attended statewide conferences on self-advocacy as well as competitive integrated employment. During the lead up to the Iowa caucus, he attended many political events with his dad telling his story and encouraging other candidates to support disability rights. Bill and Kyle will share what they've learned as self-advocates and lead a discussion on the importance of self-advocacy and how it impacts each part of the daily life for all of us. We do know we have a, an election coming up here in November, so this is great timing. I'd like to thank Bill and Kyle for being with us today. We are so, we are so excited to have you with us. With that, Bill, I'll turn it over to you. Great, you wanna, uh, thank you so much for that great introduction, Bill. Um, the DD Council and, and my involvement a few years ago in that really got me motivated. I'll say again, I was really advocating a lot when Kyle was younger and you kind of go back and forth with that, but it was the DD Council that really spearheaded uh, our stepping up our advocacy as well as Kyle's journey in competitive integrated employment and voting rights. Um, and I think it was around 2013 when I served on the council. So um, I want to add something to that. Uh, first, before that, I want to explain that Kyle's speech capabilities are limited, um, but you do talk and he will talk periodically through that. And I'll help folks understand what he wants to say because he has a lot to say. Kyle has recently joined as a board member, the newly formed Iowa Disability League. And we're real proud of him for that. And he's earned that spot in his own right. And it's very exciting to see him taking that next step. So, so Kyle, what are we gonna do today here? What do you got there? Do you wanna show him what you have there? Can you hold it up? So what we have that we, is kind of a framework for us is, is a, a couple, last summer, I guess the summer before, the University of Iowa Child Health Special Clinics came out and told Kyle's story or helped Kyle tell his story in a publication called um, the Iowa Family Story Project and really talks about Kyle's journey through employment and he uses this a lot when we speak at events. Um, mostly again talks about employment but also his involvement in the community. So 
Um, I guess uh, moving forward, if we want to just go through the slides and uh, we'll kind of talk about, you know, a couple of those and, and how our journey kind of started. So Kyle's been an advocate on his own right, uh, is employed. We've advocated at the State House, uh, obviously at the top. We were fortunate for a few years to have our very own Senator Yoakum serve as the uh, Senate president. So it was really nice to have her ear um, talking about our issues. And we were at the Capitol that day advocating for people with disabilities. Uh, the photo below that is a legislative for or a forum, I'm sorry, that we did during the uh, uh, build up to the primaries and it was with Senator Harkin and Senator Gillibrand as well as Senator Yoakum and a couple other uh, advocates for people with disabilities and we were talking about disability rights that day. So that was a great opportunity to get our message out there and we, we really appreciated the opportunity to have Senator Gillibrand and Senator, and Senator Harkin be there. Um, Kyle participated in the I Am Medicaid program a, a few years, a couple, I guess a couple years ago to just highlight who, who we're talking about when we're talking about people that re receive Medicaid. Uh, I think we constantly need to do that, that they're not just numbers and all of you aren't just numbers, you're, you're people that uh, depend on those supports and services to be as independent as you can. So we, we, we did last year when the uh, lead up to the caucuses, which really started uh, about over a year ago, didn't it? And I think our first event was in February of last year uh, when we attended an event when uh, Senator Sherrod Brown from, uh, I believe the state of, of Ohio was planning on, on thinking about running for president. And we started with a question about employment received a little national press on that. And so that kind of became our mantra, didn't it? That we would ask the candidates what their thoughts were on employment for people with disabilities, um, competitive integrated employment, and that means above minimum wage. So uh, the middle was a, 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 a Fox town hall that Senator Gillibrand did, and that was really the first time we met her. Uh, got to know Mayor Pete pretty good. We were able to introduce him at an event um, probably a few weeks before he dropped out of the race, but it was right before the Iowa caucuses. Um, and it was pretty awesome. Um, he sends a real positive message. I think we're going to see more of him in the future. We also participated or piled in in a campaign to um, let folks know that people with disabilities attend the caucuses and they attend the caucuses and because you can, right? And you're a voter. Do you like to vote? Sure. What are we going to be doing in a couple weeks? What are we going to do by mail? So, oh, you're going to tell who he's kind of tell who he's going to vote for, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> but um, you know, we have disagreed on candidates in the past, and I think that's important to point out because you know, just because Kyle doesn't speak real well doesn't mean he doesn't have a lot to say. And uh, you know, we communicate, we talk a lot about the election, don't we? Sure. So. Okay. So the next one is, again, I mentioned we'd gotten to know uh, Senator Gillibrand pretty well and uh, uh, we were able to have dinner with her and she wrote down literally everything we said and, and really, I truly believe, cares about people with disabilities and in fact has gone back to New York and, and uh, met with uh, people in the state of the New York, New York about disability rights. Uh, she stopped by and see Kyle at Papa John's that, that next day and that was pretty cool, wasn't it? And just kind of hung out with him and uh, learned about what he did at work. And uh, the other photo is just some involvement we've done in the community and we were serving lunch at the mission, weren't we? And I think that was, that was gosh, a couple years ago. Uh, the, the bottom photo is pretty exciting because it was uh, the first women's march that was held after the 2016 elections and, and uh, Kyle and I wanted to make sure that the disability um, 
uh, voice was heard. I'm dating myself there too, because that was four years ago. The shirts held up pretty good. So kudos to ID Action for getting good quality t-shirts, I guess. <laughs> uh, the other two photos were last October. And where do we go? He, we went to DC and Kyle was asked to uh, speak at a uh, forum on competitive and integrated employment and tell his story about his journey with employment. And that was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, we were actually supposed to do that again in March um, and uh, also speak with the National D Dis the National Developmental Disabilities Group, but also speak at a legislative forum then. But as we all know, uh, March kind of turned all of our lives upside down. So that trip needed to be canceled, but uh, we're ready to go back whenever we need to. So do you want me to lead into this is a video that we did for uh, the DD Council and ID Action five years ago now, right? When you first started working at Papa John's. So he's been there about five years now and uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. Approached our family and was wondering what Kyle was doing and would like to give him a job. And uh, the rest is kind of history, actually. Um, so he's really blossomed in the environment, uh, seems, seems to be a motivator at work. Um, always excited about going to work and then getting his paycheck is, is really the reward. So it's been great. Uh, well, Kyle came here about a year ago. We brought him in as Mr. Slice and a box folder. Um, when we brought him in, we had problems with the staff getting along with one another. The, mo the moment that Kyle actually walked through the door, everyone started coming together. They started working with Kyle a little bit more. You know, they had to build that team to support every member of it. And Kyle has just brought us all together. It's so. his attitude. You know, you can, you can bring in a 16-year-old kid they're gonna come in, they're gonna have their head down, and they're just not gonna go up and beyond. They're not gonna have the ability to get along with everyone. And Kyle brings that. There's never a time that he doesn't have a smile on his face. As soon as you walk through the door, customer or employee, you're greeted by him with a high five, a fist pump. He's done more than I could ever imagine from the beginning to now. He's just fantastic. He's one of our better employees, that's for sure. You know, Kyle keeps us together. He's, you know, in the kitchens, you have, it's fast paced. You've got a lot of stress going on. So the only way to relieve that is by enjoying what you do. And we'll throw on some music. Kyle will dance around just like all of us. You just kind of get into that mode and you keep going. Anytime we've got a carry out customer, Kyle will be folding boxes, he'll stop, he'll grab the door for them. There's nothing better than having a gen gentleman at the door. I'd love to see him working full time. I think that is anybody's goal. He'd love it too. And, and he doesn't even have to tell me. I think he shows it in his, his actions when he's at work, when he comes home from work. Uh, he's always excited about it. Awesome. You do good work, you know that, right? Yeah. Awesome.
been invited by uh, the APSI group, Association for People Supporting Employment First, to come to Washington to talk about Kyle's transition from sheltered work to competitive integrated employment. It's been great for Kyle. Um, he's been working in competitive integrated employment now for five, just about five years, uh, doing well, learning new skills, uh, right? learning how to make pizzas. He works at a pizza place uh, for a uh, national pizza franchise uh, locally and uh, has job coaching for assistance, but also we're moving away from that and natural supports are starting to kick in. So we're going to go to D.C. and uh, tell Kyle's story. The message is that uh, you can make the transition from sheltered work to competitive integrated employment and uh, there's actually some legislation in, in the House and the Senate now to you know support that by removing sub minimum wage um, and looking more at competitive integrated employment. Um, the supports are there, um, and the legislation also provides more supports for states to to make that move uh, by way of you know increased job coaching things like that. Awesome. Uh, uh, so, so thank, thank you, thank you for, for you know, sharing, sharing, sharing the videos again. and, and um, getting a little yeah. feedback here again. So I don't know if we can. How's that? That's much better. Yeah. Um, you know the the pictures. A lot of them are self-explanatory, but uh, it really did kind of happen by the one event that we attended, and then we just decided last year. That, that we were going to talk about employment, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, tell our story as much we can. Some of the candidates seemed to understand it and some of them didn't. And so, you know, it's uh, still was great to get our message out. Um, we did uh, get a shout out during one of the Democratic debates last December. Um, we were waiting for one of the candidates to bring up disability topics and it wasn't happening and by gosh out of the blue it came from one of the moderators who had interviewed Kyle and I and I way back a year ago in March. Uh, it took us a minute but we were completely caught uh, off guard on it. We didn't know that the question was going to be asked so it was kind of kind of weird to hear your name on national TV wasn't it but I think it did help to open up a conversation about disability issues. Um, and the candidates did start to release their disability policy plans and and that's important because we want that message out there so um i did see um somebody that did put i'm seeing some of the chat wanting to know about if kyle is working now um so i'm probably jumping ahead a little bit here to questions but um you know he is working um uh part-time obviously when uh everything kind of closed up in March. We made the decision together uh, that Kyle probably shouldn't work for a while because we didn't know what, what was gonna happen. And I, I think in a large part, we still don't know, but um, we do know how to take better precautions. So Kyle was off work from uh, March until about June. Uh, but in talking with, uh, you know, the agency that provides job coaching and his employer, uh, we felt that we'd like Kyle to get back to work for a couple days a week at least. Um, I think it was starting to affect your mental health a little bit, wasn't it? Because yeah. you, you were looking for things to do like all of us are. And um, so uh, it was a tough decision to make. I'm, I'm not going to make light of that, but we decided to send him back. He worked for about a month and uh, ironically, his job coach came down with COVID. And uh, so we you know, stop the work process again for a bit. Um, we both went and got tested and both tested negative, which I, I don't want to say that it was a, a good because it wasn't, it was good that we tested negative, but it was good that, that 
we felt that the precautions were in place because he had been exposed and the precautions worked. So I can't stress enough to folks to wear those masks, um, whether you're working or not, and make sure that your employer is supporting that. And if you're receiving support services and job coaching, however it may look, um, you know, you have a right to tell them to wear proper PPE. And uh, I, I think they should be in their agency should be providing that. So um, you wear your mask at work. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and Kyle's gotten pretty good at it and, and watches out. He understands that, you know, we have to be safe, don't we? So right now he's working about three days a week, uh, a few hours a day, but um, still enjoying that. Right. And uh, we just kind of monitor things and it's kind of a week at a time here to see how it goes. Uh, we did stop having him use public transportation for now. Um, but uh, his employer has been extremely supportive. Uh, they love Kyle. He's, you know, moved from, I think, being welcomed as, okay, we'll give this guy a shot, you know, but at really becoming a valued member of the team. And, and uh, I say that because his, his boss now will periodically say, let's start looking at other things. So they're having that conversation. It isn't coming from the agency that provides job coaching as much as it is the employer themselves. And so they're building that relationship and he's becoming a true valued part of that, that team. So it's, it's good. Doesn't mean it's easy. It is tough. It is tough and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, but, but it can happen. And Kyle now makes probably in three days what he made in five days when he was in the sheltered workshop. Um, so what else are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to be voting, right? And, uh, we, uh, have become strong advocates for voting and voting by mail in particular, uh, despite some of the things that we're hearing, I believe it's safe. Um, I think it's important to follow your, uh, county, what the rules are in your county to make sure that, that you're voting safely and voting timely. I mean, absentee ballots are great. Make sure that you get them mailed when you need to get them mailed. Mail them early. I'd say get them filled out as soon as you can You when you receive them if you've requested an, requested an absentee ballot. Um, I believe that uh, many of the precincts and counties are, are taking really good precautions to make the polling sites safe in, in the event that you do need to vote at the polls. But again, I, I can't stress enough to, you know, use those masks and uh, make sure that you're, um, you know, washing your hands and everything. And I think they're going to they're gonna do a good job this year to make sure everybody's safe. But um, I know in our county, we're able to drop our ballots off at the courthouse in a drop box that will be available here in a couple of weeks. And that's what our intention is to do, because I know there are some concerns about the postal service. So, you know, we have those concerns as well. I, I think it's going to be safe if you mail them ahead of time. But I, if you're concerned about that, inquire at your county auditor and see if they have that option to drop them off in person at a drop box. Um, so, um, but we're excited about it because we love to vote. We will miss going to the polls, won't we? Because we like to go to the polling site, don't we? Yeah. Um, the last couple times we voted and the most recent was the primary, uh, well, probably a school board election, but we use the electronic machine and uh, it, it, it worked out really well. And uh, what's been kind of interesting is the poll workers are, are, are pretty much the same people when, at, at our location. So they've gotten to know Kyle and immediately get everything ready for him. And that, that hadn't been the case in the, in the past. It seemed like the machine, the voting machine might have been kind of stuck in the corner. But um, hopefully that's happening in all of your locations. And if it's not, Tell them you want to use that if, if you do indeed want to use that. Um, I use it um, because, you know, I, I, as, you know, Kyle's legal guardian, I'm, I'm able to assist him. And, and uh, so I find it much easier to use than doing the, the paper ballot myself. So uh, anybody can use them. You can request those. So keep that in mind. And, hey, uh, Bill, uh, 
Bill, I was just going to jump in. Thank you for that. Yeah. And just to remind people, just specifically, uh, um, you can request your absentee ballot now and up until the 24th of October. Yeah. If you request it now, they will be starting to mail those out on October 5th here. Um, and I really appreciate your recommendation. If if people want to mail them in, but if you'd rather drop them off, you can, in some counties, they definitely have the drop box at their county auditors. If they don't have that, you can arrange with your county auditor to do curbside voting where they would come out and, and get the ballot from you in your car. Just call ahead your county auditor and make arrangements there. Um, so thank you. I just wanted to kind of add some specific dates to that. So. Perfect. Thank you, Bill, because I sometimes get jumbled around with the dates and I don't like to give false information either. Right. But, so I kind of stay away from the dates, but I was pretty sure you would have those. I thought that it was October 5th. We have mailed our uh, absentee request in. Um, they're, they're, we still get them in the mail. I think we've gotten about 10 so far, which I, I think is good in a way, but it also can be very confusing uh, right. to people which one to use. So we waited Personally, we waited until we got the official ABR from the, the Secretary of State's office. So we knew and, and uh, that that was going to be the right one. And that's the one that we did. And also point out that w w you can also track your ABR, yep. uh, which is really interesting. Uh, and it was easy. We did that a few days after we sent ours in and they both showed up that they've been received by the county auditor's office. So that's, that's a pretty neat thing too, because I'm one that when I mail stuff, whether there's issues or not, I get paranoid, did the person get it, you know? And I'll usually do a follow-up phone call to make sure, especially if it's an important document or something, to make sure that they received it. But it's really a nice tool. But well, Bill, you guys are, you and ahead, Kyle Bill. are getting, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, you guys are getting a lot of congratulations and compliments. Um, somebody said, so cool, keep doing all the great things um, that you're doing. And uh, um, and then uh, somebody brought a huge fist bump to Kyle to show the others the strengths of people with disabilities. And thank you, Bill, for being his person. Um, and then uh, uh, there was a question about, um, it said, great job, Kyle. Have you advocated for disability issues with both legislators and candidates with both political parties? Um, hey, do you? Absolutely. Uh, when we were in Washington um, in uh, last October, we did um, have a, a pretty good conversation with Senator Grassley um, and his, uh, his uh, it was his uh, policy person for the Finance Committee um, at the time, she's now uh, left Grassley's office, but she was she was his uh, uh, staff person really for his his uh, position on the finance committee, and and the importance of that and and his chairmanship of that committee was that they oversee things like able accounts. Um, there's legislation to um, increase the age for uh, currently the, the onset of disability has to happen by age 26. In, able to in order to open an ABLE account. That leaves a lot of folks out that may have suffered injuries, spinal cord injuries, the such, after they turn age 26. You know, there could be a horrible car accident. Um, they're not able to open an ABLE account, and, and that's unfortunate. And so we were there to encourage Senator Grassley to work more on that legislation to add that in. We didn't see a positive response from that, but we definitely made our voice heard. Um, and we'll continue to do that as well. So yes, it's, it's important to speak with both parties and um, we've talked to both parties at the State House as well um, to talk about mostly healthcare issues, but also to highlight Kyle's employment. And uh, those are issues that really should be nonpartisan. Um, and in the past, they mostly were. To some degree now, they've seemed to become partisan issues, and I totally don't understand why. Um, but um, hopefully by meeting with both parties, we can change that. And I think, you know, doesn't matter what party you belong to, but I, I think try to be respectful when you meet with 
legislators, and I know that can be difficult sometimes, especially in the climate that we're 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 living in now. Um, but you know, if you want a good response, uh, I guess somebody told me because I can get pretty assertive sometimes. Is you get more bees with honey, and and so it's it's important to try to do that. Um, Obviously, when you make phone calls and uh, phone calls are better, in my belief, than email, it kind of goes back and forth, but I think they count the phone calls. And uh, so we've been really active in doing that and voicing our opinion on, on things. So uh, yes, absolutely meet with both parties. Great, um, one of the questions that came up was, it just says, um, um, Kyle, how do you work at Papa John's? And I thought maybe you'd want to talk a little bit more specifically about any precautions you're doing to keep safe, because I think that's top of mind for people that are living with disabilities. And then um, I know the video talked about what you do. And at that time, you were, I think it was called Mr. Slice Guy and, and putting boxes together and, and opening doors. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the tasks that you do at the store in addition to how you keep safe? Do you want to show them? Show them what you do at work. And what do you do there? Good edge. Bring a bab tea. Should I should I help you with that? Yeah. Okay, so basically what Kyle just told you and and is that Initially, he was brought on, as the video said, as a box maker and Mr. Slice. Mr. Slice, he hasn't done a whole lot. They share the costume with several um, different stores, so it's not at the local store that much. Um, one of the things that's kind of neat that, that was an offshoot of that is, is Kyle does attend Camp Courageous every year. Of course, not this year because camp was closed due to the virus. Um, but in the past, there was an event in September called a Back to School Bash, and they had mascots come from different thing, places around the state. The, the mascot for the Cedar Rapids Colonels would be there. There'd be somebody from Goodwill. Kyle actually went as Mr. Slice. The exciting part to us for that is that Kyle loves going to camp. So until he doesn't decide he wants to go to camp no more, he'll still go, but he's also giving back. And, and that's what I think is exciting as a volunteer. And, and by doing that, you know, so it really helps him be part of the committee. It's not just employment, but back to the employment stuff then. And, and so he basically was making up pizza boxes and how you do that. Uh, but what he was telling you that, and, and it kind of goes along with what I said, how the employer is starting to pick up and decide, let's, let's take a look at some other duties for Kyle. So initially it was making boxes and dressing up as Mr. Slice. Um, but he's now started to, he told you he fluffs the cheese. I didn't know what fluffing cheese was until um, we had a meeting at Papa John's and his, his boss said, well, he could, he could do this. So one of the things before they put the cheese out to make the pizzas, it's in the cooler and it's kind of frozen. So how do you do it? And you know, just kind of finger through it and get it all loosened up. So when they grab it to put on the top of the pizza, it's all loose. So it's called fluffing the cheese. So you may have learned something today and making the boxes. And the other thing he does is stock the, um, they, have, they don't have fountain pop there, but they have uh, bottle pop. So they, um, they, uh, they um, stock the, the cooler with that, so he does that, and that takes a little bit of skill because you have to go by the dates um, and make sure that every, and that's been the biggest challenge probably because the reading is important there, but we're, we're working through that with the job coach and even the, the people that deliver the soda aren't really doing it the way they're supposed to. They're supposed to rotate it when they bring it in, but they don't, so that Kyle's kind of picked up on that. He uh, will clean some areas around the store. Uh, the other thing that his employer had mentioned was that he could come in early and uh, help clean underneath the ovens and uh, from the night before once they've cooled down. Um, and so he's done that. So it's been exciting to see the employer come up with more ideas for Kyle rather than just keep him at a standstill. So, so he's growing in the environment and that's exciting. There's been bumps along the road and it, it kind of comes down sometimes to the manager and if they truly embrace it rather than 
just having Kyle there and his manager that is the manager that is there now truly embraces it um, and has really been supportive in us, you know, with the schedule. With respect to safety, um, Kyle is amazing at wearing his mask and I'll throw in my nursing sort of uh, opinion here. I think the two best things we can do is, is make sure we're wearing a mask and also good old hand washing and wash frequently. Um, social distancing is also important. And um, the fortunate thing with where Kyle works and why we decided that, you know, he could go back safely was, you know, the, the, there's not a lot of sit down eating there. They have one little table. I don't really ever see anybody eating in there. It's mostly carry out and delivery. So j just by the nature of that, the, his exposure to others is somewhat limited. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but we felt strongly that it was impacting Kyle's mental health um, and by not working. And so we had to weigh that out. He, he's very healthy. So um, he does have underlying conditions that are mostly in his past. You know, they're very well controlled at this point. So he is a person that would be considered at risk. So you have to take that into account. But we felt that, you know, since they were able to keep him safe at work and uh, as safe as can be, it was better for his mental health to at least get him back for a few hours a week. He's definitely not working the amount of hours he worked before, but um, it's enough to keep him happy. And I, I, we have to also look at mental health. Thank you guys. I, one other comment here by one of our um, council members, Brady Werger, he had made the comment that um, it sure is nice to have people that you're working with that are advocates for you and support and keep, and keep thinking of additional work for you to do to keep purposeful. And so that was kind of a, um, um, a compliment, but also a kind of a reflection of how engaged you are there at Papa John. So that's great. Um, it, it really is. And, and I think that is really the key. And if, probably the first couple of years, um, Kyle worked there and they were excited to have him there. He had a, it was a friend of his that really hired him. Um, he left about a year after that. And we kind of went through a period where we had management that came and get, went and didn't really quite get it although the district folks appreciated Kyle there and wanted him to stay they welcomed him but he was just kind of there and he was kind of at a standstill so I really applauded the new manager when he came in and we started to formalize everything a little more and then working with the agency that provides job coaching too is crucial and to get them on board and all, everybody need to make sure that we're on the same page as well as his case manager and, and uh, that that's happened pretty good too. So we've had pretty good success with respect to that, um, but it is ongoing and you want to keep those lines of communication open. And, and our fear was that when Kyle stopped working, it'd be like, oh gosh, how is this going to happen? You know, when this is all done, are we going to have to rebuild everything? So it's another reason we want to try to keep them in there if we can do so safely. I'm not, you know, telling folks to just go out and work if you don't feel it's safe. Make sure that those safety measures are in place. Um, we've been fortunate, but it has been a lot of hard work. Um, you know, we, we've had to continue to meet and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page. So, uh, and right now we're in a sort of a sweet spot, but, um, you know, things can change too. Um, that's why I think it's important to really make the shift to competitive integrated employment and start to look at that first versus later down the road, because I think that's how people, you know, I, I don't want to be overcritical of supported employment in workshops either because for the most part, I think they treat people well, you know, the unfortunate part is they're paid very little and they're paid very little because they can be paid very little. And, and I, I don't necessarily think it's linked to their productivity anymore because, you know, supposedly it was when Kyle was in the, the sheltered workshop, but how come he can make over minimum wage now and he's seen as productive. So, you know, I think he was pretty productive there too, but it's the formula they use. And uh, 
And the other piece is that he's integrated in the community. Um, oftentimes, as good as sheltered work can be, and, the, and people are, can be happy there, they're not really integrated in the community. And uh, I, I think uh, that's the other piece that's so important. For instance, I'll give an example. Kyle there had a couple co-workers that had been there for the last probably four years uh, who he bonded really well with, right? What's their names? Because how... Who did you work with? Your buddy at work that's gone now. Hank. Yeah. Mike is your boss. Who is your big buddy, the tall guy? Big. Dave and his sister. Dave. Dave and Sam were, were brother and sister that I think it caught them off guard. They didn't realize that they were going to bond with Kyle like they did. And they did much the same way that all of us have done with coworkers. And to me, that, that said, yes, this is right, because that, that's, that's what's called, uh, you know, the natural environment and natural supports. And, and pretty soon we started seeing that happen. Sam was starting to show Kyle how to make pizzas. He's done that a couple times, so he can do it. And, uh, you know, we haven't moved into that much more because the pandemic's kind of started. And unfortunately, Sam and Dave both left the place as fast food, so people do come and go. But the other cool thing about that is that they've kept in touch with us. Uh, Dave was here. Dave plays in a rock band, and Kyle goes to listen and is kind of a, a honorary member. And so, it, you know, it spills over into the community, and and that that's the other thing you build those relationships. Um, again, that's not always easy, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that. But it really did with them too, and I was like, wow. Um, and Dave is like seven foot tall and it's kind of interesting. I always joke that him and Kyle were basic, basically twins that were separated at birth because they're two of a kind. And he goes, yeah, he goes, every time he looks in the mirror, he sees Kyle. And it's kind of funny to see him standing next to each other, but the man's a gentle giant and has stayed in touch and it's pretty cool, huh? Actually, he came over a few weeks ago and, uh, we threw a couple down in the backyard, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the other piece that I think is important. And it's that, that being part of the community and being recognized then, you know, and, and that's the other thing that's happened with the campaign stuff is, uh, well, we'll tell a story. We went to the uh, hall of fame celebration last fall in Des Moines and we went back to our hotel and, and a, a young lady walked by and, stopped dead in her tracks and she goes is that kyle stump <laughs> and it was somebody that had worked with one of the campaigns and just recognized him from something we'd done and i i, I was just like wow they didn't look at me they said kyle so he he's doing it on his own and and uh you know as he was growing up you know part of that comes from when he was little and and my advocacy for him in school was to always have him present as much as possible at IEP meetings and any school meeting. And it wasn't, again, you know, the speech barrier is there and it wasn't as much as he was going to participate verbally, but oftentimes, and I know a lot of folks that are listening, I'm preaching to the choir and you've experienced all this is, is it's, it's, it, it sometimes in some of those meetings becomes more the conflicts that, me as the parent are, are, are having with the school folks. But if Kyle was present in the room, it would always bring us back to who it was about. And, and I think that's really important. Um, and uh, so that kind of spills over into adult life, but what it's really turned into is Kyle speaking for himself. And I can't say enough how excited we are about him being asked to be a board member for this new group that's, um, you know, starting up and hopefully to just kind of speak. They, they want people with disabilities themselves to be on the board. And that's totally important. And uh, it kind of comes back to that nothing about us without, without us um, statement that I've always loved so much. So at some point and and for me what it gives me is um getting close to retirement here myself um 
a little bit selfish because I want to be able to retire and uh, not have to do some of this stuff anymore. So the more that Kyle can do independently, um, the more I'm able to go out and have a little fun too. So, you know, it's kind of about my independence too, but I also want to make sure that, that things are in place for him that are going to support him um, long after I'm gone. Um, I'll be brutally honest here when, when Kyle was born and he's heard me tell this story a little bit before and I, I think I just talked about it yesterday on a meeting. Uh, when Kyle was born, I, I felt like I was gonna have to figure out a way to outlive him because I was the only person that could really make sure that he was being cared for. Um, I'm starting to not feel that way anymore because um, we're working on the supports that will be there long after I'm gone. Um, there's no guarantees in life, no, but we can try to put things in place and uh, we want him to continue with his advocacy and, and independence as much as he can when I'm gone. And that comes from here, so. Bill, thank you. That was a really touching uh, reflection. And, um, there's a few other questions here that have come up, and one was uh, in going back to the debate conversation when you guys submitted your question. You might have specifically mentioned it, but we didn't catch it. Um, what was the question that was asked? So we were at an event um, a year ago in March, and it was one of the early events when there was like, I think what we have about 27 candidates running. So we were pretty busy. We tried to go to as many events as we could. And we went to a house party and I believe it was John Hickenlooper from Colorado was running at the time. And so this gentleman approached us um, and asked if we would participate in a podcast. I've never heard the podcast, um, but I, said sure so we talked mostly and my question to um governor hickenlooper on that day was about employment and me eh, it was kind of a yeah we support people with disabilities answer which i i, I don't know if he totally answered the question but um but the, we talked to the guy from the podcast wanted to talk to us after so we talked mostly about you know how Kyle was going to live in the future and and that he was employed in competitive integrated employment but that was not an easy task to accomplish nor is it for a lot of people with disabilities because there's still a lot of stigma there um, but if I think we're moving in the right direction so we never really thought a whole lot about it because we did some interviews with some other press people if you remember leading up to the caucuses the press were here like you know I mean I uh, you know, they were everywhere. And uh, so I never heard anything more about it. And we were sitting in our living room. We always, one of the things that we've always done, we go to the events, but we also don't, didn't go to debate parties because we felt that it was better, not only for Kyle, but for me to take it all in by listening to the debates in person. And so we always stayed home. We didn't go to debate parties. People were, wow, well, why don't you want to come? And I thought, no, you get clouded then by the crowd reaction. Well, um, Tim Alberta was one of the moderators. It was the PBS debate in December. And it, it, the question he raised, I'm not trying to frame it the same way, but he did get the message out there. And he mentioned that he had met Kyle and I in Dubuque and, and uh, talked about Kyle working at the pizza place. And that, so then he framed it as, as president, what would you do to support people with disabilities in employment, in living, he called it living facilities, not so sure I really have worded it that way, or uh, places to live, I guess, more and housing and, and, but it was an exciting and we just about fell off our chairs. Kyle was beaming and I was a mess on the floor because we didn't know the question was coming. So it wasn't something we talked about him really in advance, but it did spearhead every one of the candidates raise their hands. And I'm like, finally, we've been hoping that one of the candidates would bring up disability issues and here it ended up being a moderator. And, and so three people were able to respond even though they all wanted to. And it was the first response was from, uh, it was actually posed the question to, um, uh gosh the guy from california that was running the millionaire <laughs> i'm starting to forget names <laughs> and uh 
And then the second one was uh, Andrew Yang gave an amazing answer to it and, and talked about people with disabilities have intrinsic value. And, and we do know that Andrew Yang has a son with autism. Um, uh, and then Elizabeth Warren also answered the question. And uh, actually, we were able to talk to her at an event a couple weeks later in Dubuque. So I introduced her to Kyle and, and uh, we talked about competitive integrated employment. So that's kind of how it went. It's still on YouTube. You can find it. It's probably about three quarter of the way through the debate. But we were honored and I, I felt like, wow, it, it started a conversation at least. And hopefully it will keep that conversation going. But background a little bit on Tim Alberta that I've been able to find out is um, he's actually more of a conservative member of the press. Uh, he he uh, worked for prior to working. He's with Politico now, but prior to that was with more of a conservative wing. It wasn't Fox News, but it was uh, a, another one. And I, I can't recall the name right now, but um, he uh, also has a son with Down syndrome and, and uh, you know, I think part of it was personal for him as well. He did mention, I do recall him mentioning that when we talked to him at the house party, but I had no idea who we were talking to. It was, we just thought, wow, well, another person doing a podcast. And so what the heck, right? So, but he, he remembered from March until December. And so hopefully we helped to, you know, stick that into his head because I'm sure he did a lot of interviews between then and, and December. So uh, it was an honor to be part of that conversation and hopefully, hopefully people will remember that. So uh, Bill, uh, th there's still a lot of questions coming in for both you and Kyle and uh, um, I'm going to try to kind of categorize two of them here real quick and they're kind of ones both from the advocate, ones from advocacy and ones from employment. And from the advocacy one, I think you've kind of hit on a lot of these things, but somebody said, how did you you know, how do you find opportunities to get involved and share your voice? So that's kind of the advocacy question. So I think all of the debates and following the per, um, different uh, um, people running, that's one question is how do you get involved and stay active? And then around employment, it said, what advice would you give um, as you're considering a competitive employment? And, and so those are the two kind of wrap up questions as we're kind of nearing our hour here. Yeah, with respect to advocacy and, and um, you know, I mean, obviously there was candidates on every street corner practically last year. And, and so we would find out about the events in the paper or, or through our local party and, and we'd go as much as we can. Get a front row seat, be pushy sometimes. You, sometimes you have to and get to the front and raise your hand and get that question answered. I mean, I've got a knack for that and I guess it helps that I've got pretty long arms. Cory Booker actually commented on that, which was interesting, and as did uh, Sherrod Brown. Um, and so if you get your hand up first, it's like their eyes go to you. And, and they usually, we've been pretty successful with that, haven't we? And then also to meet with the uh, organizers from the campaign, and we did a lot of that, and I can't stress that enough because they are the people that are on the ground. And we told our story to just countless of those. But what that helped us do was get nose our way into the private little meetings with the candidates. We actually had about 20 minutes with Kamala Harris one night at a private event after her main event. And that was because we got to know the organizer. And, and so you, you do have to be a little pushy, um, but be respectful by all means, and formulate your question and know what you want to ask. Um, with respect to the employment question, I think the key for us was well, two things. Obviously, you start with vocational rehabilitation and, and get that application filled out and tell them that you want to explore competitive employment, uh, integrated employment, and, and start there. Um, the, the other piece is, is also talk to friends in the community. Kyle really did get his own job. I mean, we were starting the paperwork and the job offer came in before we even had that process completed. Um, but it was somebody that he had helped out at a little bar in the community that his sister worked at and was just kind of informal. 
And ironically, the guy that was the food guy there ended up at Papa John's and ran into my daughter and said, hey, how's Kyle doing? I'd like to give him a job. And here we're doing all this paperwork and it just comes out of nowhere. So like any of us, you know, a lot of us have gotten jobs because we know somebody, probably a great percentage of the time. So that, that, I hope that answers that question, but I can't stress enough, get in touch with your local voc rehab folks. And if, if you hit a roadblock there, call the state office, you know, um, don't be afraid to, you know, push it up the ladder if you have to, because that's what they're there for, as well as Iowa works. Um, they should be helping out with that as well. Well, thank you, Bill. I, there is a, there's just a few really quick one or uh, just quick answer ones too that I just want to throw out to you. I think there's a talk show that has 30 seconds and thir 30 questions or something like that. So yeah. what, <laughs> somebody Rapid said, how, how old is Kyle? Somebody asked if you're willing to share that. How old are you? <laughs> Kyle is 30. He Thank you. Birthday. We like to point that out because the Americans with Disability Act is also 30. So Kyle's also <laughs> always known that. And we like that. That's great. And then name the agency he's on the board with again. It's called the Iowa Disability League. If some of you might be, be familiar with Upgrade Medicaid, and it's kind of morphed out of that and just starting to organize. So, uh, uh, you know, I know they have a Facebook page under uh, Upgrade Medicaid. Go to that and uh, like that and join in. And there's weekly calls for Upgrade Medicaid every Monday at 7 p.m. that are on uh, Zoom and anybody oh, can join those. Well, and that was one of the other comments. Somebody said, um, remind them to keep watching for Iowa Disability League, which is Cal's advocating for. So I'm just going to pause for a second. And I know Brooke's been watching also. I don't think I've missed any of the key questions there. I've got most of them. Um, so I just, I would like to think that was outstanding, Kyle, and really appreciate um, all the things that you're doing and the proud work that you two are doing. And uh, um, it was very inspirational. And I think that, you know, one thing I would just end with is, you know, we were looking really for that balance around advocacy and how important it is to get your voice out there and be a, um, be a leader. And I know Brady and other people were commenting that uh, um, just keep, you know, hitting the drum and making sure people understand how important um, and how valuable and how intrinsic importance it brings to all of our lives um, and people in that field. Um, and the other thing around employment, that was, uh, um, you know, knowing that that's an advocacy point and such a vital part, part to all of our purpose. So I um, just really wonderful. And everybody, you've got a lot of compliments there in the compliment. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for all the great work you're doing. Um, we're really proud to be a uh, part of the team with you. So um, I know if we were all together, we'd be standing up and giving you a round of applause. So thank you, uh, Bill. And thank you, Kyle. And well, we miss miss seeing everybody this year because we we've gone to the conference quite a few years and and uh, always find it. I always learn so much and 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 Kyle likes to participate and hopefully next year we'll all be able to come together. But thank goodness for technology that we're at least able to do this. But we say thank you, thank you for having us and uh, it's been fun. Go out and vote. Yeah. <laughs> vote. <laughs> Thank you.